This is a very interesting device. It's a Soviet air ionizer, but it works in a different way to the ionizers that are most commonly used elsewhere in the world. Now, this one is called a Ryazan 101, and Ryazan is actually a city in Russia, and the image in the front of it is the Ryazan Kremlin. That all adds up to an interesting feature, really. And what's odd about this one is that whereas a traditional ionizer has pointy needles or carbon fibre emitters to emit an electrostatic charge into the air, this one does emit the electrostatic charge, but it uses a completely different technique. And even better, the, I've uh, gone through the manual with Google Translate, and some of the interesting things in it, there, there it is, there's the, uh, there's, I presume that's a bed. It's kind of designed for above a bed. I wonder what that is. Uh, but there is the wire suspended near the ceiling. Well, not that near the ceiling. There's the unit in the wall. But the interesting thing about this manual is it's very open about what's inside it, because uh, if you keep skipping through, there's the schematic. It's actually got the circuit diagram of, is, of what is inside here. So let's do a quick summary on ionizers and how this one is different. So a traditional ionizer, supposing, uh, let's get a decent pen here. Supposing this is your bedroom viewed from the side. And there is your bed and you got a pillow in the bed for comfort. And maybe you've got a chest of drawers over here with the drawers sticking out. Traditionally, a British ionizer would actually just sit on the edge like that and it would be plugged into the wall and it would make a huge mess, but it would uh, have needles coming out the front and it would charge up the air. And any dust in the air would uh, take on that charge and would be precipitated out to other surfaces. Now, I have to say, this ionizer is being sold with quack medical things. Uh, to me, an ionizer's primary function is to remove dust from the air. It does so really well. This was a test I set up. I put that ionizer there and just left it there for ages in an area with a little bit of hazy, well, the whiffle zone for those who have seen live streams. And it's precipitated dust and dirt out over a period of time, and look at the difference. It's really made a huge mess. That is fundamentally what an ionizer does. It precipitates dirt out of the air and makes it stick to walls. That's why it's unpopular with some people. Anyway, the way this does it is different. The Ryazan unit, is that correct? Ryazan, that is correct, has a thin uh, 0.016 millimeter wire suspended in the air, roughly 500 millimeters from the ceiling. Uh, that's almost two feet. And then, tied onto that, is a bit of fishing line that goes over to the wall and goes around a hook. And then there's another bit of fishing line at the other end that goes around a hook there, and that insulates it. Because this thing is a very high output impedance, as you'll see in a moment, because we'll take it to bits. The unit then mounts in the wall, and then has a dangly wire. That's that yellow wire there. A dangly wire just twists onto that wire, comes across and plugs into that, and they say, don't let that wire go near stuff because, well, it's got the charge in it and it's, you know, it's going to deplete the effect in some way. Uh, and then that unit then plugs in to the socket as before. But that then creates a high negative charge in the air and uh, an improved your sleeping and well-being, etc. That's what they claim. Precipitates dust out there. That's good enough. Interestingly, in the manual, they say, we recommend leaving your windows open. I say, no, because that's going to let more pollen and dirt and impurities in. Uh, that, the whole point of an ionizer is to clean the air. That's why it helps asthmatics. Um, so let's just cut straight to the chase then. Let's open it. That's the best bet. So incidentally, there's a little connector bit. It's a bit of springy metal in there that you can push a wee pin into. Where is that pin? There it is. It's a wee brass blade. No, I've just pulled the screw down a bit. And it pushes into that. And that's it connected. Very simple to connect it. And it goes on the wall with just one screw. I don't know. Oh, that's for the cable, isn't it? So they can wrap it around it. I would uh, plug this in right now. So we could see the orange neon glowing. But I don't know if it's A, going to explode. Or B, fully charge up inside and give me a zap when I open it. Much as that would please you. I've already removed a big dod of what I would describe as bitumen, black sticky bitumen that was over the screw. I think that's a warranty thing. This thing coincidentally comes with a warranty of two years, which is pretty good, 24 months. There's not a lot to break usually in ionizers. And is uh, approved by the Ministry of Health of the USSR. 
But they're a bit vague about the description of that. They say ionizers are approved by the Ministry of Health, the construction of them, which isn't quite the same as having theirs specifically approved. I would say I'm not so keen in the design of this one in the sense that the wire goes across it, makes it quite complicated to set up. But I get the whole point of them having that fully isolated wire hovering in the air to do its job. So inside, ooh, we have a traditional voltage multiplier as shown in the schematic. What a big neon indicator. That's quite nice. Um, right, tell you what, I'm going to take some pictures of these, I'm going to test some components uh, and just give values. Has that neon seen much use? Oh, it's got a strange electrodes as well, that's quite odd. It's a beast. Uh, right, tell you what, one moment please, I'm just going to take some pictures of this and then we'll explore it further. Well, I've got the pictures. It's not as good a pictures as usual because that is a huge circuit board. It doesn't fit into my normal photographic equipment, but I've got the pictures so we can look at them. We could have just looked at the circuit board. But either way, I've put it back together and now I'm really tempted to plug it in. I have stuck a bit of wire in this side of the high voltage port with a carbon fiber emitter on it. I shall just bend that up the way a little bit. I'm going to bring a meter in. This might just blow up. I really don't know how safe this is, but you know what? It's never stopped me in the past. Um, so I've got a death adapter here. I'm going to plug it in. The power consumption will be virtually nothing. This might go bang. Nothing has gone bang yet. The neon indicator is glowing in there. Tell you what, right, okay. So let's get the meter and I'll stick the negative onto an earthed object in the vicinity and I'll hold it in front of the carbon fiber emitter and it's showing ionization. Very low level ionization compared to little Chinesey modules but pretty good. Oh you can, can you see that? Have I got this way off shot? Uh, so putting it in front it's picking up a negative uh, potential there. That's interesting. So it is working. Right, tell you what, let's take a look at that neon indicator because there's something interesting about the way they're using that as well. So I'm going to turn the light off. Oh, watch your eyes when it comes back. It's going to be pitch black. Yeah, the neon is fairly stable. Slight shimmer visible on camera. Okay, this is where you have to watch your eyes because the light is coming back. Well, tell you what, I'll pause momentarily so it doesn't white out. And it's back. Right, I'll unplug this now. Interesting plug. Hmm. Right. I shall put this to the side. Now it's charged up to a suitable high voltage. Uh, I measured this wire before realising that in the manual... Uh, where is the manual? I've put it somewhere. Here it is. I measured it and then scribbled in the back of the manual. Wire diameter is 0.16 millimetre. It actually says that in the manual, that the wire diameter is 0.16 millimetre. And it says if you... Uh, lose it or mess it up, just get another bit of wire of any metal. So it's the thinness is the bit that really matters here. Because that's uh, the secret of ionizers is the, the sharp needle point sort of effect or the charge is greatest at the areas of the highest curvature and a thin wire, much like the corona wires in uh, photocopiers. Right, tell you what, uh, I'll just put this right out of the way in fact. Just watch my fingers in the plug here. Will it give me a tingle? No, it didn't give me a tingle. Just checking. Sometimes they do because it is involving high voltages. I'm more scared by the death adapter than I am by the blooming ionizer. Right, so here we have it. These capacitors are 10 nanofarad, 1000 volts, and it's, uh, I'll just focus down onto that in fact. And it's worth mentioning that these days, well, to be honest, this was 1990, I'm pretty sure that, uh, I'm pretty sure that Mountain Breeze in the UK were making ionizers back then with mu much more stages, the needle ones, and using capacitors similar to this size and the 1N4007 diodes. This is very, very Soviet. It's using these big 1000 volt, uh, 10 nanofarad capacitors, and the diodes are very chunky and they're rated about 800 volts um, at uh, 300 milliamps. So if anything, the I'm not sure why they've got such big tabs on them. The, 1N4007 would have been better here, but this was presumably manufactured in Russia. And it's notable the yellow line is the polarity indicator, but it's not 
there on all of them. The red dot is supposed to indicate the voltage rating, and it's not there on all of them. Uh, there's the clip that the wire goes into. There is the uh, output resistor, which is a staggering value. It's over a gig ohm. And uh, oddly, they've got one meg ohm in series of the neon. And normally when you've got such a high value resistor in series of the neon, that's why I tried this. I wanted to see... Uh, the discharge in it is un un unstable. It tends to flicker about on the... Like a neon flicker flame candle. And it's interesting to note that in the manual, they do say if the neon is flickering about like that, it's not a fault. It's quite normal. Other than that, the... The only thing's worth mentioning here, it is a standard multiplier. It's just, I mean, there's the, the circuit board flipped, so it tallies up with the front image. Um, and the only other thing worth noting here is a series resistor on the incoming supply, which is used in some other ionizers, and they've linked out uh, one section of the multiplier. So there's two diodes missing, two capacitors, and it's just jumping straight from uh, this diode um, through that, uh, where that capacitor would have been straight to the output. Right, tell you what, schematic. It's a Russian schematic. It is the one out of the manual, which I just blew up slightly. I didn't blow it up physically, but I blew it up um, and uh, whiteified it by using, turning it to two bit and then removing blemishes. I just thought I'd just make it look nice. It looks very nice. This is the Russian ionizer schematic. So this resistor here is 1K. This resistor here is 1 mega ohm, And this one here is 1.1 1 .1 gig ohm. So a me that's a thousand ohm, that's a million ohm, and this is a thousand million ohms. It's like it's the next step up. That's quite a high value. Normally in something, well, say for instance, my unit, which is utter disregard for human safety, is to one meg ohm resistors on the output. The mountain breeze ones tend to have the uh, 10 meg ohm, two of them in series to make up the voltage rating. And the idea of really of these resistors is safety. It keeps you isolated from the main side, but it also reduces the risk of you getting a tingle in a zap, which is what they're looking at here, I guess. Hmm. Also note how many I've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is the pretty much the same as the mountain breeze. This is quite a small number of stages, but having said that, it's notable. The reason it was actually being able to ionize with the carbon fiber emitter is because the carbon fiber emitters are so sharp that they require a lower voltage. It's a good way of upgrading an old ionizer. So here's 220B, that means 220 volt. It does also mention that it can be run 120 volt if they use a nice, uh, 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 a non-isolated auto transformer. So I wonder if there's multiple voltages in Russia. Don't know. Uh, fundamentally, that's it. The uh, alternate push and pull of the mains, the AC, uh, alternatively, the current is steered via the diodes and it basically it increases it by one step each time. It doesn't, supposing it doubled the voltage in this capacitor, it won't like double that again the next one. It just doubles and adds the value of that capacitor to that one. So say for instance, it was say 600 volts across them by the time it had been doubled, it would be end up like 1,200 above the next capacitor and then 1,800. Um, but just uh, each capacitor, I'm not doing very good here. I never do with voltage multipliers. Each capacitor would only have about 600 or so volts across it. That's what I'm trying to say. But it all adds up to the high voltage at the end. They claim about 4 kV, I think. Uh, so it's an interesting device. I'm not really sure what else there is to say about this. The circuit board is oddly discoloured. The flux has done something in the back. I'm guessing this is a synthetic resin bonded paper circuit board but look at it. Not sure. Um, the tracks are strangely three-dimensional as if they're almost lifting off the circuit board. Maybe they are lifting off the circuit board. Um, the way they've attached the neon is very odd. They've got a little tongue of uh, sort of like a U-shape cut out, out into the circuit board and they've basically slipped a little rubber sleeve over that and then they've pushed the neon through the rubber sleeve to hold it in place. Odd, but very expected. Strange. The output there, they could have just used 210 mega ohm, but they've chosen, it must be quite hard getting such a high value of resistor. Also, it has to be rated for a fairly high voltage. That's why the other ionizers tend to use uh, a multiple of uh, standard resistors to make up that higher voltage. Not that it really matters, because as soon as you approach it, that this is so current limited, it clamps it down anyway. 
But that is more or less it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say in here, but there's not really much to say about it. It makes interesting reading it. It's got all the quack things of betterment of health and well-being, but ultimately it is just a dust precipitator, isn't it? But that's it. I shall fetch it back in. That is the uh, Ryazan 101 uh, Soviet uh, ionizer.